Why is it so special in the brain to understand how consciousness works? Well, the idea that I had, uh, because of my views about understanding being something which is not a computational activity, I needed something which involved that part of physics which, in my view, had a hope of being non-computational. And the only part of physics is that, that I could think of then and can still only think of now is where you have a quantum system which becomes a classical system. See, this is one of the big puzzles of quantum right, mechanics. Right. How is it that you have these rules like you know, Schrodinger's cat being dead and alive at the same time, which are what you get from quantum mechanics, but you don't see them at the classical level. Yes. So there's something missing in the gap between quantum and classical. Now, the question is uh, how... See, my argument would be that the physics that we is missing about how the quantum world becomes the classical world is something which I think is the only place where you would have non-computational activity. Mm -hmm. So if we think non-computationally, we must be making use of whatever that physics is that goes from the quantum to the classical world. Now, that's a big, tall order, because it means that in the brain, we have to sustain a quantum system to such a degree that whatever this new physics is, it comes in and becomes relevant. Whereas usually what happens is the quantum system becomes, becomes entangled with the, well, right. the right. environment and you lose all what people call environmental decoherence. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, uh, you lose the information that, that would be relevant in, in, the, in the new physics. So you've got to keep your quantum system going for that degree so that the new physics actually comes in usefully.